So the, the, the church wetland project from Vera, we just went up the street to the Methodist church there, uh, the historic Methodist uh, church of Lelyfontein, and we met up with uh, Ivan, who is the project manager of another project for restoring a wetland and, and clearing aliens from it, and this was funded by Disney. Previously, they did some work in the wetland, but the, they did not have enough funding to take out all the poplars, so there was a lot of regrowth. And this money was specifically earmarked to, um, to clear the regrowth and get, ri get rid of the other trees, which they are in the process of doing. Yeah. We couldn't get it to up to a standard, and that's why the whole project just, it just was just standing still, because the church couldn't take it further, yeah. or nobody else could. Now with this funding, now we can at least take it to where it can be self-sustained. From okay. the church part, you know, because they, it will bring water to the community, number one. Yes. We're putting a big tank up there, okay. and the pump, which the church, one of the church members will eventually, every second day, just fill up the tank for okay. the community. Because we have a tremendous problem here with water. So anytime the water goes off, then we'll have some clean water and from the wells, which will be great. And now with the trimmer and stuff, it will be easy to maintain. You yeah. know, if someone from the church can just maintain it, keep the grass short. The plants we're planting here, it's not flowers, we're having indigenous plants, nice. like the snail rit and the lilies and stuff, which is low maintained, you know, yeah. it doesn't need a lot of uh, maintenance, so, so it will be great, I mean, we're just looking forward to having And you also wonderful. told me about the, the trees. Yes, we're planting some indigenous trees, five different species. I can't remember the names. <laughs> I'm sure wild olive is one of them, but how many? But carrier, but carrier, yeah, yeah it's one yeah. I can remember the one at least, but carrier. <laughs> so yes, we're planting the trees. It's about 50 of them, Clement them is gonna bring them from Cape Town, which they will adapt here. They will grow here. Yeah. So I think that will be the most exciting part. And then of course after the trees is planted, we we're gonna fix our pathways, you know. We're gonna put a signboard up there which say this is the church area and this is the <laughs> well and this is the garden and you know, so someone comes in there and at least see what's happening inside the garden. Nice. And we're gonna make some more beds of indigenous plants. And yes, yes, we're taking out, we're taking out uh, the poplars. poplars, all of them, but we will eradicate them so gradually. Mm. We won't take them all this too out now because it gives a bit of shade in the meantime for the church area especially. But as we plant the indigenous trees and it grows to give some shade, we will take this out one for one, one by one we'll take it yeah. out. Eventually all will be out before yeah. the project is over. And right now the way you used to control this is you poison the stumps and you take out the roots. We take out the roots, we poison the stumps. Yeah. Yeah. We first take all the roots out is underneath the ground, you see, yeah. because that's the dangerous ones. Yes. The stumps are not such a dangerous because you no, can just put the poison roots. the roots. Yeah. And from one root you'll get up to 20 trees. Yeah. You're small no, little trees. <laughs> so yeah, we just try and take all that out now and then. But and I since, think... Since the, the trees are out, do you notice any difference in the water? The water is growing fast. Oh, eh? That's, in the, the water increased a lot. That mm. one was very low. That one is almost half now. We didn't okay. clean it out yet, that yeah. one. Because there's some roots in there as well. Yes, in the well. It's still to be taken out. We don't want to put poison in there. Yeah. Otherwise the poison no, is going to be in the well. So we've got to clean it out, take the roots out there. And then maybe if we have to, just cement the inside here and there a bit so the water can grow up. Yeah. Otherwise the water just seeps yeah. into the, the soil, you see. Yeah. As we did with this one. And that one, this one grows so, so nice. That's why I've, 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 I've opened up the, 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 the outlet there, yeah. as you can see. Now I can exactly see how the, the first, the amount of water coming out by the outlet pipe, that's the amount of water growing yes. inside. Yeah. Because I, I monitor it, you know, every day I go there, I say, no, it doesn't go less, more, less. It's just one big skin. Yeah. And to be very honest, a lot of people in this village, the taps, if you open the tap, it doesn't even go as fast as that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, a lot of people so is most on the lot of people is most on the drip stel so yes. you know the drip stel. <laughs> we know the drip stel. So. so so they can open the taps and they won't get that amount of water. Yeah. I'm trying to say that only runs away there. But luckily we have beds down there, yeah. which we, we, we try and so we can try and keep the water here in the yes. beds. Yeah. Because we, 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 we found that that all these indigenous plants, like the reeds and all that stuff, grows where it's nice and wet yeah. all the time. So now we're trying to lead the water all into the beds Good. there. and the plants will also filter the filter water. Filter the water, you see, yeah. instead of the water just running out. And this is a very special wetland because it's this black soil that's dark. Yeah, very good, wetlands. very good. You can yeah. see, once you, you dig here, you'll see it's nice big fat worms here, yeah. you know. It's, it's, fertile. it's fertile. It's fantastic. Unfortunately, there was a heck of beans, a beast there. 
we couldn't get near them. Oh. But we had to clean there, you know, yeah. so they, they just moved over to the next stump. There they are on the next stump. Okay, so you just they didn't go. Them out. We just smoked them out so they can just move over because <laughs> yeah, we yeah, had to just, clean there and, yes. and nobody was <laughs> wanted to go there. As you can see, there's still some of them there. Yeah. yeah. And one was stung already, the one guy was stung already. Mm -hmm. And so we said, no, look, we smoked them out, so yeah, we just can move to the move. next spot, yeah. yeah that's what they and that's why, but we don't actually encourage fire. Yeah. We don't actually want to make fire. Yeah. Because it pollutes the air. Yeah. No, no, I'm too scared of bees. No, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Of bees. I've been stung once. You should get somebody spot. else's because they can no. have their own honey. <laughs> Maybe, <laughs> because there's a lot of trees here that got big holes in it. They can day, go so there. <laughs> So maybe a good idea, I don't know. But not for me, I won't do it. No. And one of the things he told us is that the water has definitely, the, the amount of water that's released by the spring in the wetland is much more. He measures it. Um, it's much more than before. So the link there is that, you know, once the wetland is restored, they also planning on putting back the natural vegetation, which will include the Mikey's goed, like they call it here, uh, the, the reed mats that they can use. And I think there can be a synergy there between the two projects. At the moment, they have to travel very far to find the reeds in the appropriate wetlands. But if they can grow them there, they might be able to harvest them right there. I think that the main thing about these projects is to make people aware. I don't think that it's so much about the data they collect. That is useful to them on the personal level for their own business. I think that if we listen to what people were saying today, there is a greater awareness that climate is something that affects us every day. Vera said that, um, that people never really bothered with the weather unless, you know, they knew it was going to rain because rain is important for the, for the farmers there. But otherwise they never bothered really taking notice of the weather. Now they understand that the weather is critical and it can impact their businesses and there's a greater awareness uh, around um, what the impacts of climate, even just climate variability is. Climate change is a long-term thing, but climate variability is something that affects us from day to day. And it is changing, I think, maybe imperceptibly to some people, but people will feel the, the impact of that. So I think that's the main thing, is to, is to make people understand more about climate change and through that, um, understanding how they can build resilience for themselves and their businesses so that they do not depend so much on the, on the you know, conventional livelihoods like farming, which has a huge impact on the area.